So I'm thankful, thankful for being invited here. Uh, it's a great conference, and I'm quite uh, emotional about uh, celebrating the birthday of a good friend of mine. But uh, there is something uh, uh, more unique about uh, this event. Uh, this is uh, the first time I see Boris sitting through uh, all talks, all days, and uh, you will have to uh, suffer to this one uh, as well. So my, my interaction with Boris actually started on the wrong foot. Uh, the year is 1987. Uh, several historic uh, events uh, take place. Uh, Glasnost is uh, proceeding uh, full steam. Uh, Ronald Reagan is visiting Berlin and calls upon Gorbachev to tear down this wall. And uh, Joe Imri and I are planning to organize uh, the following year a conference, uh, the first ever on mesoscopic uh, systems. And I decide to invite uh, some of uh, my Russian colleagues whose name I know, but uh, whom I have never uh, met. And Boris Altschuler, of course, is one of them. So I send him an invitation letter. And mind you, this is a letter in an envelope that was live before internet. Uh, and I'm waiting for a, a two weeks, a months, two months, no response whatsoever. And I'm thinking uh, uh, this Altschuler is a, is a jerk. He's so snobbish that he even doesn't bother to, uh, to reply. Only years later, uh, Boris explained to me that he never received this uh, letter, probably some polychook from uh, Leningrad saw an envelope coming from Israel and thought that that was too dangerous uh, stuff to be circulating around. So um, years went by, and uh, uh, Boris and I wrote some uh, uh, papers. And what uh, I want to wish you, Boris, is a, a continuation of a great uh, scientific output. And what I would like to wish myself is a continuing um, a friendship and continuing uh, collaboration uh, in the future. So what I uh, would like to uh, uh, discuss here today is a theme that has been uh, pioneered uh, by, uh, by Boris. Uh, more than uh, 30 years ago, Boris and collaborators have introduced the concept of uh, uh, dephasing in mesoscopic systems. And uh, what I'm going to discuss here today is uh, dephasing in the mesoscopic systems with one uh, twist. And this twist uh, uh, is that uh, I'll be uh, uh, considering uh, dephasing in a, uh, anionic interferometers. Anions are particles that possess a, a fractional charge and fractional statistics. Uh, and this dephasing will be due to some uh, exotic emerging modes, which are uh, neutral modes, and I'll explain uh, uh, everything. So uh, my collaborators on this are uh, Heng Sun Sim uh, from KAIST Korea, uh, Jinong Park, who was a student with uh, Sim and then moved to uh, be a postdoc with me. And the other part will be with uh, uh, Moshe Goldstein, now in Tel Aviv University. And these are some uh, uh, recent uh, theory, theory papers on uh, uh, neutral modes. So uh, before I go to uh, uh, discuss uh, interference, I'll give uh, uh, a quick primer uh, about uh, uh, neutral modes. Let me start with a, a very simple uh, system that uh, doesn't have uh, neutral modes, at least not in the, according to the orthodox picture. This is a uh, fractional quantum hole in the new equals uh, one third. Uh, this is a, sorry. I pressed the wrong button. Uh, so this is an um, uh, a, a incompatible uh, strip uh, in the one-third uh, regime. And as we follow this coordinate from the center of the bulk uh, to the edge, uh, the filling fraction drops from one-third uh, to zero. Uh, this drop uh, marks the uh, location of the edge and also the location of a soft mode uh, a, a soft chiral mode that uh, supports conductance of uh, one-third. Uh, 
the direction of this uh, color mode is uh, uh, downstream. Uh, and by downstream, I mean that this is the same direction as is expected from a semi-classical uh, skipping orbits uh, of electrons uh, uh, near the edge. This understood, let's go to a, uh, a more complicated and more interesting uh, uh, filling fraction, uh, nu equals two third. Uh, and here, it has been uh, proposed many years ago uh, that uh, there are uh, two uh, uh, soft modes near the edge. Uh, they are the result of a filling fraction profile that starts at two thirds in the bulk, and as we approach the edge, it jumps to one and then drops to zero. So these are two counter-propagating modes, one uh, and uh, one third. Uh, 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 in order to describe the low energy dynamics of these modes, uh, I'm going to uh, resort to a uh, bosonic fields, and the bosonic fields will be uh, denoted by phi one and phi one third accordingly. Let me say in parentheses that more complicated uh, pictures are uh, possible. For example, a couple of uh, years ago, Wang uh, uh, Mayer and myself uh, uh, proposed a, uh, a model with uh, four uh, chiral modes at the edge, uh, which explains the host, host of uh, experimental uh, results. But uh, I'll stick with the uh, two counter propagating mode uh, picture for now. Uh, so a uh, few years after that picture was proposed, Ken Fisher and Polchinski came with a seminal paper. Uh, in that paper, they uh, introduced two more uh, ingredients. And the two more ingredients they introduced were uh, interaction, electrostatic interaction uh, between the edge modes and the uh, mixing due to a uh, disorder uh, a, a, uh, backscattering between the two modes. So as a result, they found a new uh, stable fixed point. And in that uh, new stable fixed point, there are uh, two emerging modes, uh, a, a charge mode, uh, phi C, and a neutral mode, phi N. And they are a, a linear combinations of the old modes, the one and the one third. So instead of having a, a two counter propagating charge mode, one and one third, uh, uh, the effect of interaction disorder is to uh, introduce a, uh, a downstream moving charge mode of two thirds and an upstream uh, neutral. Uh, the action, uh, when we use these new emerging modes, uh, the action uh, near this uh, uh, a new fixed point, uh, consists of a, a, a part of the charge mode. This is trivial, this is the quadratic and a part of the neutral, which involves a quadratic term plus a term, nonlinear term, uh, which uh, uh, represents the disorder. Uh, psi of x is the random uh, coordinate dependent uh, a disorder a mixing between the original modes, the one and one third. There is another a term, which is uh, the interaction between the neutral and the charge, but it is irrelevant. So the, uh, the bottom line is that if we try to inject particle into the edge, the particle fractionalizes into uh, the natural modes, the emerging modes of this edge, the neutral and charge. So if we uh, inject an electron, the electron uh, will be a, uh, divided into a charge part, which moves downstream, and a neutral part, which will move upstream, uh, this uh, neutral part uh, can be very elegantly uh, described or thought of as some uh, virtual effective spin half uh, entity. It's not really spin, but it, 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 uh, it has a symmetry of a spin half. So it propagates unhindered upstream, and the only effect of disorder is to uh, give rise to a uh, random uh, rotation. Uh, so it's something like that. So this is the fractionalization into charge and the uh, neutral. Uh, these neutral, upstream neutral modes evaded the uh, experimental detection for a, a very long time, until five years ago. Uh, they were uh, uh, detected in this setup by the Heiblum group. Uh, 
what they detected was that they, uh, those uh, neutral modes give rise to uh, upstream currentless uh, excess noise. Uh, since there, there were several other experiments, including experiment by the group of uh, uh, Miriam Kobe. Uh, they uh, uh, used the local thermometry uh, to identify heating uh, upstream. Uh, there was another uh, experiment uh, which detected the thermoelectric effect and, and other measurements. The last experimental fact I would like to mention is a, a relatively uh, recent uh, uh, experiment by the Heiblum group uh, where uh, they uh, repeated that measurement for many other fractions uh, below a uh, one. And for all those uh, fractions uh, measured, uh, they've detected uh, this upstream uh, excess noise, uh, which is a, an indication that even uh, for unexpected fractions, even for a fraction of one third, uh, these neutral modes uh, uh, exist. And it's not uh, completely uh, understood uh, uh, why, but this is, a, this is a fact. And I'll come back to that at the end of my talk. So once we have uh, established uh, the presence of uh, uh, neutral modes, the question is uh, how uh, they uh, affect uh, interference, and in particular, uh, what kind of uh, adverse role they play in the, this uh, uh, interference. Uh, and what I'll do here, I, I will zoom on the uh, two-third uh, case, but uh, much of what I have to say is uh, uh, more general than the uh, two-third. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have identified uh, four different uh, uh, mechanisms uh, uh, in which uh, neutral modes play adverse role on the interference. Uh, topological defacing, plasmonic defacing, uh, a, a, a dynamics where the uh, neutral modes uh, a, play the role of markers in a which pass experiment uh, and the uh, bulk edge uh, electrostatics. And I will uh, uh, talk only about uh, these two, mentioning a little bit uh, plasmonic dephasing. So let me start with topological dephasing. And before that, let me be a bit more specific about this uh, fractionalization. So here I've listed uh, the uh, uh, destruction operators for electrons and for quasi-particles and express them uh, in terms of the uh, bosonic modes of the neutral uh, and charge. Uh, so, for example, I mean, of course, there are many more operators, but I listed here only the operators with the lowest scaling dimension, the most relevant uh, uh, operators. Uh, so, uh, for the electrons, there are a, uh, two manifestations with a plus minus. Uh, in the language of the original modes of the one and one third, uh, they correspond to uh, one of them, to the injection of electron on one, and the other to the injection of two electrons on one and three quasi-holes uh, on the one third. Uh, but uh, what we uh, take from here is that the creation or annihilation of electron involves both the uh, excitation or de-excitations of uh, neutrals and excitation of uh, charge. So let me now go to uh, uh, interference. And the first example will be a fabry perot interferometer, which is a weakly coupled to a, uh, the leads on the left and uh, on the right. Uh, and as such, a, uh, the, this fabry perot is essentially uh, a quantum dot uh, where all the action uh, takes place uh, on the edge. Uh, the edge encloses a flux, a phi. So, uh, I will discuss a transport to this uh, uh, a, a Fabry Perot uh, in the language of a, uh, a, a sequential tunneling. So I inject an electron from uh, the left, uh, and this electron, as we already understood, will fractionalize into uh, the blue charge mode and the red neutral mode, and they will propagate in opposite directions. Now. Uh, uh, the velocity of the charge mode is always larger than the velocity of the neutral mode, but uh, for the purpose of this presentation, 
I will assume that the velocity of the charge mode is not only larger, but much, much larger than the neutral mode. So I inject a, uh, this electron. This electron fractionalizes. And by the time uh, the charge, charge on uh, completes uh, one winding, the uh, neutral has moved uh, uh, a little bit. So what about uh, interference? When we have interference, we have to add up the amplitude for uh, zero winding, one winding, two windings, et cetera, and then square them. So let's say, uh, take a, as an example, uh, the interference of one winding and zero winding. So uh, one winding we've already seen. Uh, it's, it uh, looks like that, and I call the amplitude for that uh, A1. Uh, with zero winding, uh, I simply have uh, uh, this process, which I call A0. So I need to add them up and square, and the uh, result uh, will uh, be a constant, plus a term which is sensitive to the flux. Uh, this, this is uh, the usual uh, first harmonic. So far, this is completely trivial. Now, let's assume that I have uh, in the bulk a one quasi-particle. What happens then? Let me first uh, discuss a situation which is uh, not physical, something completely hypothetical. Let's assume that fractionalization did not take place, and the electron as a whole uh, encircles this uh, quasi-particle. In that case, uh, the phase accumulated by this electron is the one of one phase, plus a trivial breading phase, which is 2 pi. But now we recall that uh, uh, this uh, injected electron fractionalizes, and the charge on enclosing the quasi-particle will uh, accumulate the same ion of bomb phase, but the breading phase of, of pi. So if we have now uh, many quasi-particles uh, uh, in the bulk, and q of them, uh, the uh, breading phase accumulated will be pi times uh, NQ, and if uh, uh, we allow for final temperature, we uh, average over uh, uh, many of them, the number of them, uh, uh, the, the interference signal, sometimes with an odd number of uh, pi, sometimes with an even number of pi, will uh, average to a zero. Uh, right. So uh, if, on the other hand, we consider uh, a, a second harmonic, uh, then uh, the uh, breadic phase accumulated will be 2 pi nq, regardless of whether a, uh, nq uh, is even or odd. Uh, that will be an integer times uh, 2 pi. Uh, and uh, uh, there will be no averaging to 0. So uh, the uh, first harmonic will average to a, a 0 and will be replaced by a, a second harmonic. Uh, but things are much more uh, severe and much more serious. Because uh, when I, uh, uh, I tried to uh, calculate this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, interference, uh, I had to add up uh, the single winding with the zero winding. And what you note is that the uh, neutral wavelet here in the zero winding uh, remains uh, uh, untouched. And here, it is translated a little bit by distance of uh, uh, delta L, which is given by this ratio of uh, uh, velocities. Uh, and if we want to uh, add up the amplitudes and square them, we need to include the, uh, a, a, the uh, overlap between this guy and that guy. So there will be overlap only if the width of the neutral uh, wavelet is larger than the translation uh, of that. So the width, the thermal width, is given by this uh, expression, uh, and the conductance or the interference pattern uh, is uh, uh, suppressed uh, by this factor of delta L over LT. But for the first harmonic, this is uh, unimportant anyway, because as I told you, the first harmonic averaged to zero. When we come to the second harmonic, uh, a, the second harmonic survives by this uh, uh, topological averaging, but uh, the translation of the uh, 
neutral uh, uh, wavelet as compared with the untranslated is two times delta L. So the uh, exponential uh, separation factor is twice uh, a, that of a, uh, a, a, the, the other one, uh, the first harmonic, and this may be quite severe. So second harmonic survives topological uh, averaging, uh, but uh, is further, uh, even more severely, attenuated by this uh, lack of overlap uh, between the uh, uh, plasmonic uh, uh, wavelengths. Uh, 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 things are even uh, worse here because uh, so far I've uh, uh, discussed what happens on uh, the edge, but if the electron uh, tunnels from the lead to here, uh, it uh, will leave behind also uh, neutral wavelets, and one needs to uh, 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 take into account the overlap between the wavelets when uh, zero winding is involved and when one winding is involved, and this uh, uh, adds further to exponential separation uh, uh, factors. Let me move now to another uh, mechanism for uh, dephasing, uh, and this uh, has to do with the neutral modes playing the role of markers in a witch pass experiment, and we have learned from uh, some uh, distinguished colleagues, including one sitting here, uh, that a, a witch pass experiment uh, always suppresses a, a interference, or suppresses interference to some degree. So let's see how uh, this uh, comes about here. Let me now uh, be a slightly more detailed about a uh, fractionalization. So this is a, uh, a field operator, or uh, annihilation operator, uh, which is described in terms of the uh, original bosonic fields phi 1 and phi 1 third. Uh, the coefficients n1 and n1 thirds are uh, integers, uh, and the, the total uh, charge involved in this uh, uh, annihilation or uh, similarly uh, creation of charge uh, measured in units of electron is equal to N1 minus one third of N1 third. I can also express this uh, uh, factor in terms of the new emerging fields, the charge on and the neutral with other coefficients. So if I have uh, quasi-particle operators, uh, for example, quasi-particle tunneling from one edge to the other when we have a quantum point contact here, uh, there are three most relevant uh, uh, operators uh, whose quantum numbers are uh, listed here. Uh, and uh, uh, for this presentation, I will uh, choose only uh, one of these. Similarly, when we have an almost pinch off a uh, quantum point contact where only electron can tunnel from one side to the other, as I've explained to you earlier, uh, I have, uh, I have uh, two, uh, uh, two operators, and I'll choose this one. But the, the moral uh, to be learned is that a uh, uh, charge tunneling, be it a quasi-particle or electron, uh, always uh, uh, involves uh, uh, excitation or de-excitations of uh, neutrons, almost always, I should say. Um, so now I'm coming to interference, and uh, my geometry will be that of a Mach center. So this is a Mach center interferometer electronic or anionic Mach center interferometer. This is a source, this is a drain, there is another drain here. Uh, the light uh, color is the incompressible liquid, the dark blue uh, are uh, insulators, uh, and uh, these are uh, tunneling bridges, which play the role of a half-silvered mirror in the optical uh, uh, Mach center interferometer. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is the geometry of Mach center, and here I uh, try to simplify it by unfolding this geometry. So this geometry is equivalent uh, to, to that one. Uh, so a, a, a quasi-particle emitted from here can either follow this trajectory, tunneling at this bridge, or the other trajectory, tunneling at this bridge, uh, and the two trajectories uh, enclose flux phi. Note that the uh, 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 length of the arms uh, in this picture need not be uh, uh, equal. Similarly, when we have an almost pinch off a, uh, a quantum point contact, I have electronic uh, trajectory. Again, in the unfolded picture, I have this trajectory or that trajectory and the two trajectories of the electron now 
uh, in closed flux, say, uh, phi. Uh, so let's see uh, what happens, say, uh, with the, uh, further, what happens with the interference. Uh, and first, uh, what happens when I don't have a neutral modes? So I have a, uh, a, a, uh, an, an anion of charge one third, for example, and it can either go this way or go that way, and the two uh, amplitudes of these two processes uh, should be added up and uh, squared, and I have some, some answer. Uh, what is important here to understand is that when the length of the arms uh, is unequal, there is a time scale uh, which is determined by the difference between the uh, length of the arms, the difference between the length of the arms. And uh, uh, dividing by the velocity, I get some time scale, and the coherence time, or the averaging time, uh, should be larger than this, uh, uh, than, than this time scale. What, uh, what enters here is the difference between the uh, lengths of the arms. Now, let me come to a situation where I have a neutrons. So I have a charge on, which I denoted by rho, and uh, it can follow this trajectory or the other trajectory. When it tunnels, it leaves behind neutral jets, which I denote by sigma, and those neutral jets are, are created both at, the, uh, at this point and at that point, and they move uh, backwards. So look at that. These are jets that move uh, backwards. But there can be another trajectory, trajectory of going this way. And in that trajectory, the neutral jets are emitted differently. So now, let's assume that I am an observer uh, sitting here. And uh, I'm trying to uh, detect those jets coming back. Now, if those jets are distinct, the difference between them is smaller than their width, I will be able to tell that this jet came from this tunneling or this jet came from the other tunneling, so I have a perfect witch path. And that would mean that the uh, interference is suppressed. If the distance between these two jets is smaller than the width, they overlap, and I don't have witch path, I cannot uh, detect uh, uh, where they came from, so there will be no, uh, uh, no uh, uh, suppression of uh, uh, interference. So uh, if we do a little algebra, uh, what turns out is that the uh, relevant time scale now is not the difference between the length arms, but actually the sum uh, weighted by the velocities. In particular, uh, the neutral velocity may be uh, very small, so the relevant time scale uh, to overcome is quite, uh, quite large. We need the coherence time, which would be larger than this uh, uh, huge time scale. The fact that they will make the, 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 the interferometer symmetric is not going to help us here. It's going to help us here, but not, uh, but not here. Uh, so um, uh, a, uh, one can now go ahead and calculate the uh, visibility, the amplitude of the hour of bomb uh, amplitude. Uh, and here I plotted this visibility on the scale of the uh, voltage and temperature. Voltage and temperature play different roles. Temperature uh, suppresses things exponentially. Voltage suppresses things say uh, power law. But the essence is that if the voltage or temperature and end temperature are low, the uh, width of those uh, neutral wavelets will be large and they will uh, overlap and I will uh, avoid uh, which path detection. If the voltage and or temperature are large, they become narrow, and then uh, when I detect those the, uh, neutral wavelets, you can say that they come from this trajectory or the other tra trajectory, I have a which path uh, uh, detection. Uh, so uh, a, a, uh, if you uh, try to put some, some numbers or to guess some numbers, uh, they, uh, the, the, the conditions to obtain a, a good visibility, which is in this area, uh, is quite stringent and supposedly uh, is not satisfied with the present-day uh, uh, Mach-Zender uh, interferometers. 
So uh, let me now try to speculate about the generality of all this. Uh, I mentioned to you that uh, uh, neutral modes are all over the place, are ubiquitous. And uh, then you know that uh, uh, no one man uh, managed to see uh, interference uh, of anions. So a question mark, are the two uh, related? Uh, uh, is it due to the fact that the neutral modes uh, a, uh, uh, suppress, uh, play a, a, a very serious adverse role in the interference? And if yes, uh, what uh, can we do? So this is the uh, inequality uh, we need to satisfy. Uh, we can go either to a very small interferometers or very low voltages or temperatures. Uh, if these conditions are satisfied, uh, then we have a hope to uh, observe uh, uh, interference. So in summary, what I've uh, uh, discussed here, uh, uh, well, actually, uh, two processes. I also mentioned a little bit of topological uh, dephasing. Uh, so, uh, uh, sorry, plasmonic dephasing. Topological dephasing uh, gives rise to suppression of odd harmonics. Uh, plasmonic dephasing will give rise to exponential suppression of our bomb amplitudes. Uh, and uh, then there was a uh, dephasing due to the uh, role neutral modes play as markers in a which pass uh, uh, experiment. So uh, this is the end of uh, my talk. But before I conclude, uh, I would like to uh, go back for a moment to um, my first uh, uh, meeting uh, with Boris. So it took place uh, 25 years ago, almost to the date, uh, here in Trieste. And uh, um, uh, in order to prove to you that uh, it indeed uh, uh, took place, I uh, found out uh, this. No, it did not come. No, it was in uh, uh, 1990. 19, uh, okay, so I'm wrong. But it was summer, it was here. So uh, I found this uh, uh, a photo, uh, which is low quality, but you can still see uh, the uh, railings of the uh, balcony of a, a Hotel Adriatico uh, on the backdrop of a, uh, a sunset. And uh, I would like to uh, wish you again, Boris, uh, success and uh, uh, great scientific work. And uh, as my birthday present, I made a copy of this uh, photograph. So it's this. <laughs> Thank you.